So how would you define passion? Passion would be anything that you love to do and could take as a profession. Uh, do you think Excel will still be used after say 5 to 10 years? But I believe that it will not go obsolete. What is going on in share market basis? So what is DBR? Overall otherwise you are a good candidate right? So uh, in terms of your presence in the interview. It appears that you are more inclined towards finance. Yeah. But that did not come up anywhere in the interview. That's not the idea. Yeah. Hello, sir. So let's start with your introduction. Okay. So, sir, uh, I was born and brought up in Ratlam, Madhya Pradesh, and uh, I belong to a business family. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why I've been, I have a, a inclination towards business, which has been a big motivation towards doing an MBA. And uh, I completed my class 10th and 12th with good percentage. And after my schooling, I came to Mumbai to complete my graduation in Bachelor of Management Studies. And uh, during my graduation, I did an internship as a research analyst in Karma Foundation. And uh, I've been a member of uh, Entrepreneurship Cell Presentation Club and Tourism Club of my college. And uh, I've been a team leader of, of a group project in uh, Department of Lifelong Learning and Extension in my college. And uh, in the long run, I see myself in a leadership position of an organization. And along with my career aspirations, I have a personal goal of uh, becoming a part of a uh, non-profit organization where I can give it back to the society. And uh, uh, in my leisure time, I like uh, listening to songs, I like hanging out with my friends and I love playing chess. And I've also uh, done a freelance chess tutoring as a side hustle uh, during my college. And uh, currently I've started reading a book. So we can say that I'm into reading as well. What are you reading currently? Uh, I wanted to start reading for so long. So I recently started a book named Unwind Emotions. It was written by my sister. So <coughs> that's why I started. You mentioned that you are originally from Datla yeah. right? uh, and now you are staying in Mumbai. Yes. Uh, how many years have you been in Mumbai? Uh, it's almost two years now. Okay. So, tell me something that you don't like about Mumbai. Well, first thing would be the crowd. The population of Mumbai, it's very crowded. Mm. Yeah, you can see, uh, you can go to the other station and just experience it. Okay, so you don't like crowded places? Uh, I, I like uh, some... Uh, yeah, less crowded places, less noise and all. Okay. Yeah. And uh, if you were to contrast life at Ratlam versus life at Mumbai, yeah. how would you do that comparison? So firstly, as I mentioned, it would be the crowd, the population. The, in Ratlam, the population is very less as compared to Mumbai. And secondly, there was a cultural change, uh, the transition. And uh, I can see the, there's a lifestyle change in the people of Mumbai. In Atlam, they are mostly business background, the people belong to business background and Mumbai is a service, yeah, service industry uh, and uh, the infrastructure, the infrastructure is, uh, uh, the Mumbai infrastructure of Mumbai is very good as compared to Ratlam and uh, transportation, the local trains and uh, buses and all, this, these are the things, yeah. You mentioned uh, you are from business family also. Yeah. So then if you have a business already, why do you want to do an MBA? You said that it is a motivation for me to do MBA. Actually, when I used to manage my business, uh, I learned about, I learned that I have a good management skills and business, uh, business mind. So this became a motivation for me to do an MBA. But after my MBA, I don't uh, intend to do, uh, continue my business. When you say your business, it is your uh, business or family business? Okay. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about this? Yeah, so basically, uh, our family business is a wholesale business of confectionery items. It includes a variety of chocolates, biscuits and a wide range of uh, uh, snacks and uh, wafers. And yeah. why do you, why are you not interested in this particular thing, so joining back after MBA? Actually, I like, uh, I like my business, but uh, after MBA, I want to explore my own, own interest. I want to uh, carve my own path uh, and uh, I want to explore my passion and uh, the, uh, though I learned a lot from my business, a lot of value, traditions and along with that uh, many technical things of business. Mm -hmm. But uh, I want to ex uh, explore new opportunities for myself. So it would be the, the reason for not joining business would be completely for personal and professional growth. So you will not start a business after you do your MBA? I might start a business. I would uh, try. To, I would first explore my interest, and if I like, I might start a business. So if, it or I going to be, be, if it is going to be a business, why not confectionery business? Because I want to explore different fields, yeah, different markets, industries, mm. yeah, what are my passions and all.
you also mentioned about chess in your introduction yeah uh, and you were a freelance chess tutor yes what exactly did you do and uh, when did you start okay sir. so uh, it was uh, around uh, the end of my second year and it was a uh, uh, it all started with a uh, incidence uh, yeah so actually I, it was a time for the fee payment of the third year and uh, our business was going through a financial trouble so i saw my father struggling to pay the college fees so that is uh, that is when i decided that i would uh, try to help my father with the uh, some financial support so that that is why i started the chess tutoring so firstly i started on my own i tried uh, i started teaching to kids and after that i joined the chess academy and then i became a freelance chess tutor there so i taught beginner students uh, the basic chess the starting of chess yeah. and how much do let's say chess tutors typically charge so how does it work so if you are a let's say a rated player versus a non rated chess yeah. player then how does it work uh, i mostly had the uh, kids from uh, outside the foreign usa or canada mostly the, those sites so we charge them as 250 uh, rupees per hour and if it's a rated player it's a, uh, and uh, experienced chess players then we charge them around from 600 to 800 per hour too when they have a tournament or something like that yeah so can you explain what different kinds of uh, formats are there and within chess right uh, and then how does let's say the rating work assuming that i don't know anything about chess okay so uh, firstly uh, the beginner chess the uh, uh, i don't uh, get the c- formats what are the formats you so are so tournament will have a different format right so you have rapid and you will have yeah 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 so give me all the formats Okay, so first and then how does the rating work in different formats? Yeah. Okay, so mostly in tournaments it's a rapid, uh, rapid chess tournaments which uh, with ten minutes time for each player. And uh, for a beginner player, what we start, we start with the basics of chess, with the pieces, how the pieces move, and the general strategies. This is how it start. And for around three to four months, this uh, goes on with the strategies. And after that, we start with puzzles, and uh, then we try to uh, get the children, uh, kids to. Join some tournament or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it goes like this. Okay. How does the rating work? I'm talking about the ELO rating. Uh, I don't know how that ELO rating works. Okay. Specifically, yeah. Okay. You do you yourself have a rating? Uh, I have a chess.com rating, mm-hmm. uh, which I show mostly. I have a rating of one thousand fifty. Yeah. Are you aware of this game called Go? Uh, Go. Uh, no, I am not aware. Of this. Irish. So, which player has highest ELO rating? So, right now, Magnus Carlsen has the highest rating. Uh, I don't remember the exact rating, but it is around three thousand plus. Three thousand plus. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what are the criteria for uh, deciding grandmaster and master and things like that? So, if you want to be a grandmaster, so what all qualifications will require? Uh, I don't know exactly all the qualification, but I guess there are mostly the tournaments, the FIDE rating and tournament. This work for the Uh, qualification of the grand masters and masters. Uh, what is Sicilian defense? Uh, sir, I don't know the exact strategy. Uh, so you mentioned uh, you want to explore your passion. So how would you define passion? Uh, sir, firstly, a passion would be a thing that uh, I would uh, like to do as a profession uh, after MBA. So uh, I would explore different uh, industries, different fields of interest. Uh, after my MBA, which industry I want to work in, what type of work I want to be in, and uh, this is how I will explore uh, my passion. So, passion is always related to MBA. Uh, no, sir. Passion can be anything. So, uh, if we talk in general, then uh, passion would be anything that you love to do and could do as a uh, could take as a profession. So, who is the member of Lok Sabha from Ratlam? Sir, I'm not aware of. It. So you mentioned you did uh, internship with an NGO. Yeah. So what was it all about? So firstly, my role in the internship was a research analyst. I had to research on different NGOs and basically the Karma Foundation for which I work for. Uh, it was the it was associated with different NGOs to provide the services to uh, poor, the underprivileged. So my work was to uh, analyze the NGOs, different NGOs, and uh, help our foundation to associate with the NGOs. so i basically researched on the ngos and then i presented my work to my uh, to my uh, colleagues 
and uh, I had to do the reporting and communication with the coordinator. Uh, I didn't understand. So, what exactly was your job? So, what is Karma Foundation trying to do? Firstly, Karma Foundation is a non-profit organization which is uh, working. Uh, started in Gujarat. Right now, it has uh, twenty thousand plus volunteers with uh, in thirty-three cities of India. So, it is uh, trying to provide poor kids with uh, learning, education, and skills. And along with that, it is uh, working to provide women with uh, necessary knowledge of uh, sanitation and resources. And along with that, it is uh, uh, working to provide food to the poor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mostly that. Okay. So, so, why are they doing research about different NGOs? As to what exactly because, is uh, the plan? Karma Foundation mostly uh, it works on its own as much as it can. And along with that, it associates with different NGOs mm-hmm. to provide different ser- uh, services to the poor. So, like it, uh, if there is an NGO that works specifically to uh, feed the poor, mm-hmm. then they will associate with the NGO and they will send volunteers and they will uh, try to increase the reach of those NGOs. Okay, so majorly the work gets done through these partners. Uh, yeah, it is not the NGO that is association. Yeah. Okay, understood. So, what was the outcome of your internship? Well, uh, in the with the three months of my internship, I tried to uh, do research about as many NGOs as possible. And after my research, uh, I was able to get five NGOs uh, of the requirement uh, with which the Karma Foundation associated with and worked with in the various cities of Gujarat. I can see that you also done a Excel for Business Analysis certification. Yeah. So, can you tell me what's the difference between VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP? Have you done VLOOKUP? Yes, sir. I have done, but uh, uh, I can't remember. I can't recall right now. Can you tell me what do you use VLOOKUP for? Uh, VLOOKUP is mostly used to find the uh, uh, particular value in a vertical in a uh, in specific columns. So V stands for vertical. Uh, yeah. So then, can you guess what HLOOKUP H stands uh, for? Horizontal. It will uh, it will probably be used to find uh, values in the ro- different rows. So, VLOOKUP is for rows or VLOOKUP is VLOOKUP for columns? VLOOKUP is for columns. Okay. Uh, Alright. Now, tell me about Excel specifically. Now, there are a lot of developments that are going on on the tech front, right? So, where you have these uh, tools such as ChatGPT and you have AI and everything. Uh, there are a lot of programming languages that are there. Uh, do you think Excel will still be used after say 5 to 10 years? Considering you have done a certification, so you are assuming that yeah. you will require those kind of skills. But do you think Excel will become obsolete at some point of time? Sir, I believe uh, Excel is uh, being used in uh, various organizations for since so long and the data are still on Excel. Uh, so, with the increase with the automation and the upgradation of the article, uh, artificial intelligence, I believe that it will be used to upgrade the Excel to uh, optimize the Excel and use it uh, uh, as a in better way, mm-hmm. use Excel in better way. And along with that, uh, different uh, uh, data structure uh, languages mm-hmm. like, like MySQL and all uh, can also be integrated with my uh, with Excel to provide better results. But I believe that it will not go obsolete uh, mm-hmm. yeah, in future. What is SQL? Uh, MySQL is a data structure. Uh, no, what is SQL specifically? Uh, what do you mean by that? A structured query language. It is a, a, a programming language used for data, uh, mostly database management. Okay. Yeah. How did you learn SQL? Do you know SQL or you don't? Uh, I have learned SQL in my class 11th and 12th. So you had it as part of your curriculum? Yeah. I had IT as a subject. Mm. Yeah, information. Uh, uh, are you more tech oriented in terms of when you study finance? Yeah. Are you more interested on the finance side of things or more on the technology side of finance? Uh, mostly on the finance side of uh, the subjects. Okay. So, what is going on in share market these days? Uh, sir, I don't, I'm not following share market much, but uh, right now uh, the Nifty 50 hour index is uh, currently at uh, uh, 21,700 around. Yeah. So, how is it derived? Uh, it is uh, it is a compilation of the 30, uh, sorry, the 50 uh, highest market cap. Uh, uh, Companies of a uh, stock market. It is established by uh, NSC. So, but uh, so it is currently at twenty one thousand seven hundred. Yeah, okay. Actually, at twenty two thousand. But 
that's fine yeah. so where do we get this number sir uh, it is a weighted average of all the uh, top 50 market capitalization companies and uh, weighted average of what of the the market cap uh, the the mr the se- uh, selling price the current selling price of the those companies current selling price so if it is a weighted average right so yeah. some companies should have so the weights the weight price ha yeah. so sir some companies will have a selling price greater than 21700 yeah because it is an average yeah and some companies will have less uh, yeah, yeah. below that So no, can sir. you name some companies that are share price greater than twenty one thousand seven hundred that are in? Uh, no, sir. Actually, I I think I might be wrong, but uh, it is not based on the share price directly uh, as a weighted average. Uh, I I think it is derived as a weighted average, and then uh, proportionally it is set. Yeah. So what is mezzanine finance? What uh, mezzanine finance? Uh, sir, I don't know about that. Something in between debt and equity. Uh, sir, I can't recall it. What are preference shares? The preference share are the uh, uh, are the uh, are the a uh, type of shares issued by the company to uh, to finance its uh, uh, operations. Uh, it is. Uh, so how is it different from ordinary shares? Are equity shares? Yes, sir. So equity shares mostly. Uh, Gives you uh, gives voting right to the shareholders, and preference share does not do not give voting rights to the shareholders. And along with that, preference share have a fixed interest rate, so the uh, they have a pre- preference over the equity shareholder in uh, in case of dividends, and uh, in case of liquidation of the company, the preference shareholder are given priority. So what is DVR? Uh, so can you tell the full form of? I am asking. Uh, sir, I am not aware. So what is ADR? Uh, sir, I'm not aware of it. Okay, I can see that you have done a fundamentals of digital marketing uh, certification. Yeah. So, if you are inclined towards finance, then why do something related to marketing? Uh, sir, actually, I have done that certification in the first year of my college. So, during the first year of my college, I was mostly exploring the different uh, subjects like finance, marketing, and all. So that is why I have done that certification, and I believe it was very helpful. Because at the time the digital marketing was very booming, and I wanted to learn what was it was all about. So uh, learning the fundamental of digital marketing it was uh, important. Can you tell me what is SEO? Yes, sir. So SEO is search engine optimization. It is a tool used in digital marketing to uh, to get your websites on the top of the search results. It is done by using different keywords and uh, other techniques. Tell me what. Things you do in your free time apart from you mentioned, I think uh, listening to music, yeah, right, and uh, playing chess in your introduction. So, what kind of songs? So, I mostly listen to English songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from different artists such as uh, Ed Sheeran, Taylor Swift, and um, uh, there are many more actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, how did you develop this particular interest? Uh, I was not much into uh, songs before, but uh, during my class 11, 12, I just started listening to songs and all. Uh, as a, in my leisure time, I started listening, and then the habit grew, and uh, it developed into a very, um, uh, we can say, uh, my, my favorite thing. You don't listen to anything, right? Yes. Uh, I listen to Bollywood songs too. I mostly listen to English songs, but I also listen to Bollywood songs. And you also mentioned watching movies. Yeah, so tell me a movie that impacted you the most. I mostly like thriller movies, but uh, the movie that impacted me the most would be, uh, I guess, uh, or you can tell me your favorite movie also. That's also fine. So my favorite movie is Inception. Okay. Yeah. Anything particular that you really like about Inception? Actually, sir, the idea of uh, yeah, the getting into the dreams of uh, different people and the idea of Inception, mm-hmm. the starting of an idea, the Planting of an idea in the mind that was very uh, yeah intriguing. Can you talk about Nolan's films? Uh, so yeah, have you? I'm assuming that you must have watched a few of his movies. I watched Interstellar. I watched Dark Knight and uh, Tenet. Hmm. Yeah, do you movies. like Tenet? Yeah, I like Tenet. What's the meaning of Tenet? Uh, sir, I don't know actually the meaning of Tenet, but for what I can uh, guess, it might be uh, the. The reverse or something. Was it commercially a hit? Uh, 
sir i don't think it was a hit it was like of a hit of a, a christopher nolan movies or other movies were so why do you think we have not been able to make a lot of movies like say inception or interstellar i believe that uh, uh, most of the bollywood movies for what i think are uh, mostly based on romant uh, romantic themes or uh, right now i think they have started making uh, suspense movies thriller movies but christopher nolan movies are mostly based on scientific principles and the different uh, a completely different genre and i believe that most of the indian directors and producers are not uh, much into those genre right now hmm. but i believe that it might start in the future so you mentioned scientific principles uh, i guess can you tell me any scientific principle that nolan has used to explain it sir mostly like in the inception movie hmm. uh it was uh, about the uh mostly about the dreaming uh, and the uh, science of dream and how uh, ideas uh, uh the actually there these are hypothetical principles not actual scientific principles but i believe that uh, these are uh, mostly myths or something so in the movie interstellar uh, they it was it was completely based on space exploration yeah how what is the uh the gravity of different planets how it affect the time and all that's it then okay all right um i think we can stop here so thank yeah. you and wish you all the best uh, thank you sir nice talking to you okay sanskar your interview is over yeah uh, we'll give you the feedback so overall how was the experience uh, it was a good experience the questions were good but uh, i think i fumbled a lot in between uh see the one definite feedback that i can give you is uh, related to your answer to first question your first question was uh, introduce yeah. introduce yourself right yeah in that answer to that question you gave a laundry list of about 15 different things yeah that's not the idea okay. in the introduction you talk about some three four good interesting points about yourself okay that the uh, interviewer would want to explore okay. because you know i find it so interesting let yeah. me probe it in a bit more detail so you don't want to highlight anything that uh, you are not comfortable talking about yeah and also you should not talk about anything that will invite trouble not only in the answer to first question but in any question for okay. that matter in the yeah. interview so you mentioned that you come from business family yes and that's why your inclination for business and that is your motivation to go for mba yeah even though we are not specifically ask yeah. that question why you want to go for it you don't do that wait for it because it will give wrong signals in the sense that you are not com- very comfortable handling that question that's why you talk about it on your own okay. even though we did not ask you that question so in a way you are trying to preempt that question from coming to you okay so once you talk about it yourself then we cannot ask you that question yeah. right yeah then uh, you overall it appears that you are more inclined towards finance yeah but that did not come out anywhere in the interview from your side yeah we ask you yes okay. yeah so find out about different roles in finance okay and identify which role uh, most interesting which yeah. one you would want to go for yeah and because you are from bms background yes. and you have a specialization in finance yeah. definitely you'll be able to establish link yeah that this is what i've done so far this is a role i am interested in yes or this is a career path i want to choose okay and if you, if i want to get there i need to learn certain things yeah in more detail which i at the moment i don't have and mba is a link between the two okay and then you talked about chess but say if you mention chess yeah. then certain questions uh, related to say elo rating yeah and grandmaster yes and then sicilian defense and you know what not yeah are expected and that's so if you worked as a tutor yes sir and you mention uh, chess.com rating of 1050 are you sure or it was more yes sir it is 1050 okay. and some of the answers that you gave you know the 
we were like beating around the bush without coming to point okay did you realize that yeah uh, in some questions yes as a repetition yeah for example the difference between ratlam and mumbai yeah. so population yeah we i mentioned about it two, three, two times. three times yes same thing packaged in different ways yeah cultural change and lifestyle change yes sir yeah. and then uh, he asked question uh, how did you st- Uh, get into this habit of uh, listening to songs yeah so how did you develop that hobby that answer was not there. you just said you know when i was in 11 standard i started this yeah so you can work on that so you need to work on uh, this point and he also mentioned you have good management skills but how yes sir so i would i have to uh, mention it in answers uh, no, on your own you don't say that you have good management skills okay if they ask you demonstrate or uh, have you demonstrated your management skills any time okay or something like otherwise on the basis of your profile on the basis of answers that you give it should naturally follow or they should nat- understand okay that you have good uh, management skills and they should not even ask that question okay sir but that was not coming out and on your own you said you have, i have good management skills hmm. without really yeah. having any base but yes. that didn't come out very well yeah i'll work on these answers and uh, ah, and by the way uh, implement on these suggestions only if you are convinced because ultimately yeah, no. it's going to be your interview no no these we are won't be coming uh, yes. and uh, for answering the questions yes sir no no these are good <laughs> suggestions <laughs> so coming to my feedback uh, in the mm-hmm. introduction as girish also mentioned right you spoke about ymba which was definitely not required yeah. you could have used that opportunity to highlight some of the achievements that you have in the things that you have done right so rather than giving a list of everything that i do yeah. i'll focus on let's say one or two things but i talk about some achievements from those areas right? okay uh, other thing is of course on the finance front uh, you will have to study a lot a lot of questions which we would expect somebody who is bms finance yeah we would want that person to answer uh, those did not get answered for example adr right uh, i'm sure you must have done it at some point of time in your curriculum yeah but right now there's no recollection of that yes sir. so that should not happen so what i felt was uh, the depth can be built in everything that you have done so for example in your academics you can now go and go back to your books and study a little bit more even on the chess front you will have to study uh, yeah. right so knowing a lot of these for example openings yes. so there could be some question related to openings yes. now here i think both of us we don't play chess actively we just know the basic rules we have played it yes sir but there could be panel panel members who are experts at chess right and they might yeah. get into the depth of it so you have to be prepared for that okay now of course in the limited amount of time that you have you cannot completely uh, uh, get into the entire depth but whatever you can do do that much same thing works for your academics as well so pick up at least a few subjects wherein you can build depth that's okay. my suggestion um, regarding uh, other things i've seen that a lot of times you tend to give up easily right? because if you don't know you will say i don't know sometimes it's a good trait to say that i don't know something but there should be some effort also to uh, make a calculated guess or whatever it is right for example the v lookup h lookup thing yeah so when i prompted you that if you are saying v is vertical then h yeah. would be horizontal right yes when i sort of prompted you in that direction you were able to answer it yes sir. so why not make that effort in the beginning yourself that is uh, another suggestion that i have yes. um, otherwise uh, i think fair enough at most of the places but then you will need to improve on the things that we had discussed um i think overall otherwise you are a good candidate right so uh, in terms of your presence in the interview there were lot of instances where you were not able to answer questions yes sir. but even after that you didn't give up right uh, you kept on making effort for whatever questions that i asked you after that the other thing is uh, when you don't create depth yourself the interview starts going haywire yeah so it it crosses the boundaries in which you could have controlled it for example uh, i suddenly asked you about nolan right which has yes sir. nothing to do with movies also i mean in terms of movies yes uh, because you mentioned yeah. inception as a movie but then it has got nothing to do with mba yes sir 
so it is going directionless because you have not controlled it from the beginning yes so when you give a particular answer what all things you should cover that decides what the follow up will be okay so you will have to figure out how much do i reveal even in the introduction what are the things that i should be saying so that i get proof for that okay and for your hobbies and everything you will have to prepare uh, other thing on the communication side you say yeah a lot so okay. it's not a formally accepted thing right to say yeah uh, you should be saying yes yes sir okay. also again very minor thing but then just be careful of that uh, and prepare your academic content prepare your extra curriculars and the hobbies that you have done uh, and i think that should help you right moving forward so that's about it i think uh, we wish all the best to you uh, all the best thank you sir it was nice talking to you Bye.